Bruce Lawn. Recently, Pierce Morgan sat down with Jordan Peterson and pressed him about his belief in God, claiming that sometimes he is ambiguous, which leads many in the online community to debate on if Jordan Peterson actually believes in God or just believes in God in a utilitarian standpoint. And here, I think Jordan Peterson gives a pretty shocking answer. So let's just get it on the table. Do you believe in God? Hmm. <laughs> I don't think that's any of, I don't think that's anybody's business. I think it's the most private question you can ask someone, but then I would say also, uh, what's the right response to that? By their fruits, you will know them. <laughs> okay, so his initial answer is, I don't think it's anybody's business, but, but Pierce presses him here, which I really did appreciate. And I thought uh, the, the back and forth banter was good. How's that? Well, that's let me ask, right you, a different, let me ask you a different question, question then. Do you, do you think there is a God? Oh, I'm terrified that there might be, Pierce. How's that? And, I, you know, I'm not trying to be a smartass when I'm making that comment either. Like, they say, it's an, old, it's an Old Testament saying, I believe, that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And that's actually, that is actually about as true a statement as you could manage in such a short phrase. Okay, so uh, that's from Proverbs, right? The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. That is uh, Proverbs 9. It's all over the Proverbs, right? I like where he's going with this, okay? But he, be, he, he becomes more direct, so just stay with me. It's not a well-posed question. It's not a well-posed question, okay? It's too complicated an issue to be dealt with like that. You step into instant traps just by accepting the question. So, And this is on the back of, do you believe in God? What do you mean by believe? It's the, kind of the same answer. Now, 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 this, by far, the most clear I've ever heard Jordan Peterson be on this exact question. Listen to what, listen to what he says right here. So, I'll show you what I mean. So the first thing I would say is, what do you mean by believe? Like, do you think that a statement about the existence of God is something like a scientific theory? Do you think it's a list of facts? Is it a factual question? Does God exist or not? Is it a factual question like you're asking about whether a cup on a table exists or a plate on a table, an artifact in a room? What do you mean by this? What do you mean by believe? I'll stake my life on the proposition that God exists. What do you mean by believe? Are you trying to approach it as if there's facts? And then the punchline, I'll stake my life on the proposition that God exists. I don't think he's saying this in a utilitarian standpoint, as in the, the, the virtues of God exist because they're helpful to humanity from, right? No, no, no. He said, I will stake my life that God exists. I'll stake my life on the proposition that God exists. How, how's that? It's a pretty clear well, is answer. Is that an answer? Well, well, that's the right answer. I would ask you, here's my supplementary. Do you ever pray? Always. Okay, now, I don't know if he knows he's doing this, but he's echoing what we see in Thessalonians, where it says, pray without ceasing. So, does Jordan Peterson believe God exists? He says he will stake his life on the existence of God. Okay. Does he pray? He said he always prays. He's, I, I think that's a nod to pray without ceasing. Who do you pray to? The spirit that protects you from hell. But that, many people would say, is God. Hey, sounds good to me. And <laughs> He's still trying to maneuver on these questions. I think it's so funny that he just gave you a, a, a strong answer. I, I'll stick my life on the existence that God exists. I pray all the time to the one that could keep me from that out. What, what did Jesus say? Fear the one that can throw you into hell, right? And then he says he prays to the one that can keep him from hell. That's a nod back to earlier saying that fear is the beginning of wisdom. Fear is the and beginning so you of wisdom. You know, the, the, the critics have said, Jordan Peterson doesn't really believe in God. He's just trolling all you guys. Are you Christians? Because he knows you guys make up a huge constituency of his audience. I don't think you can say that after him saying what he just said about the existence of God. I would say if you're a noble person, then your spirit is something elevated above your mere whims. And then there's the spirit that's inculcated within you. It's a consequence, perhaps, of your socialization. But in a more sophisticated way, it's actually a consequence of the spirit that you've allowed as a consequence of your choices to dwell within you. And that spirit has a nature. It might be allied with the truth. It might be allied with falsehood. If it's allied with the truth, it's a manifestation of what has been considered traditionally the Logos. Now, what is the Logos? 
What is the Logos? So he's talking about being aligned with the Logos. What is the Logos? Well, according to John 1.1, 1, 1, the Logos is Jesus. Jesus is the Word of God. The Word of God, in the beginning was the Word, Logos. The Word was with God. The Word was God. So the Logos is the Word of God. The Logos was with God. The, the Logos is God. The Logos is Jesus. Okay? By Logos, I do not mean, by, by Word, I don't mean the Bible. Jesus is the Bible. That's not what I'm saying. Jesus is the Logos. So, I'll give you guys my thoughts on what I, why I think he does this in a moment. The more you're aligned with the truth, the more your spirit is an avatar of the Logos. And that's just, it's true. It's religiously true, as it turns out, but it's also technically true. It's technically true. See, I had to so I'm going to, I'm So if he replaced the word Logos with Jesus, I think this would totally clear up any confusion. If he released, if he swapped out the word Logos with Jesus, right? Because I know what the word Logos means and who the Logos is, I, I'm naturally inclined to hear it that way, okay? But, but I may be wrong, but I have a theory on why uh, why he, he does this in just a moment. I had a debate with Richard Dawkins about this, uh, who was a bit disingenuous for me because he sat with me for a whole show, seemed to enjoy it, thanked me very much for it, and then called me a fool afterwards. You mean Richard Dawkins was, was, was two-faced and double-minded? He was pleasant to you and then talked ill of you after the fact? Not Richard Dawkins. The atheists never do that. Some podcasts. So I know you've had a few run-ins with him, and, it, and I, it doesn't surprise me, but... Uh, what I said to Dawkins was, because I was raised a Catholic, I was given spiritual guidance for several years by Catholic nuns, uh, and I do believe in God. And the reason I said to him is that no human brain can really explain to me, or anybody, what was there before, before nothing. So if you believe in a Big Bang Theory, well, what was there before that? Because I don't think any human brain has that power to, un to explain or answer that question. To me, it makes perfect sense. There should be some being, entity, something, which is superior to a human brain. Yep. And I'm, I would think that someone with your brain would think that too. Because there are questions we simply well, that's, can't ask. Okay. okay, three things about that. So the first is, that's the argument by design, that things are so complex and sophisticated that that cries out for the hypothesis of something like a creator. I'm not a big fan of the argument by design. I can see its advantages, but it isn't the primary argument as far as I'm concerned. So the, the Big Bang proponents have a problem because it's a tenet of the Big Bang theory that the laws of physics themselves break down at the point of the singularity, mm -hmm. and that would be the point just before the Big Bang. And when you say the laws of physics, the existence of space and time even is an unknowable prior to the Big Bang. You're basically mm -hmm. positing a miracle at the beginning of existence. And so did you guys catch it? We covered this in my in my video when Joe Rogan said this in his conversation with Stephen Meyer. Joe Rogan said the same exact thing. The issue with science is all of science is hanging on the on the we'll, we'll explain the universe if you can grant us this one miracle. That's exactly what Joe Rogan uh, what, what Jordan Peterson just said. Listen again an unknowable prior to the Big Bang, you're basically positing a miracle at the beginning of existence. And so if you get to have your miracle, there's no reason the religious types can't have theirs. You might have- If you get the, Mr. Scientist, Mr. We just go off for evidence, whatever the evidence points us to, we're gonna go off of the evidence. If you get to just go off of the evidence, if we grant you one miracle, why can't we have our miracles? Cause there's, there's miracles involved. Whichever way you dice it, there's, there, there are miracles. That's a great, that's a great point. I argue about what the miracle needs to be, and I think that's an argument that has to be had. Amen. I don't like the argument by design. I like the argument by conscience better. So I think b both arguments are fine. I actually think that in the, the, the resurrection argument is the, 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 the fine-tuning of the universe, right? And then the resurrection argument, I think, is the better argument. Jordan Peterson says, no, he likes the argument through conscience and basically the, the moral argument. That's where he's going with it, okay? So... The argument by conscience, which is another string of classic theological thought, is that something dwells within you that aligns you with the spirit of reality. And it's the still small voice within that was identified first by the prophet Elijah. And it was part of a transformation in the religious viewpoint in historical terms that moved the notion of God from something like Baal, B-A-L, B-A-L, -B -A, -A, a nature God, the God of storms and earthquakes, of, of, of what would you say, remarkable and awe-inspiring natural phenomena, to the voice within that can, if you attend to it, align you with the structure of reality itself, that internal voice being a manifestation of God. We call that the Holy Spirit. Before you're uh, regenerated, before you're born again, we would say that's your conscience, and your conscience knows right from wrong, because we have the, 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 the law of God written in our hearts, according to Romans 2. Even the Gentiles have the, 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 the law of God written on their hearts. They obey a law they don't even know, they've never even read. So we have that. But 
I think specifically with Elijah, and I think it's foreshadowing that the Holy Spirit indwells us and lives in us, that we don't just have a conscience that we know right from wrong, that the Spirit of God can then guide us and lead us in all truth. And so they go into him potentially dying, they go into hell, what is hell? Uh, Jordan Peterson again says, I don't know about the afterlife. Here's my, here's my punchline. Why do I think he does this? This is why I think he does this. He doesn't want to take a firm stance on whether hell is literal or not. He doesn't want to take a, a, a clear stance and just say Jesus instead of the logos. Why does he do this? Okay, now, by the way, I appreciate this answer. And, and honestly, this question and the way he navigated this makes me want to read his book on this to see if there's a bit more in there or if he's kind of ambiguous. But this is why I think he's ambiguous. And I'm not saying this is right. I am not saying this is right. I'm not saying this is what I would do. This is, this is my opinion. Okay, and, 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 and maybe Dr. Peterson sees this video and agrees with it, and he's, he's actually tweeted some of my videos of him, about him before, okay, and, and as well as John McRae. Maybe he disagrees with it. My, my opinion is this. I think Jordan Peterson came to faith after watching his wife miraculously healed and then going through some sort of transformation in his own journey I think that he does believe, at least in a mere Christianity C.S. Lewis sense, I think that's why a lot of times he's with Jonathan Pajot, who's, who's an Eastern Orthodox Christian, and consistently platforms him. I think the reason why he chooses to not be more overt with his faith is because he grew in prominence across all of the major faiths, and I think he doesn't want to alienate a huge segment of his audience. And I think he is thinking about this from a pragmatic standpoint, where he believes that it's better to not turn off a huge ch a chunk of his audience by being exclusively, overtly Christian. And he sees the greater good in being a bit more reserved and being a bit more private with exactly he, what he believes about Jesus, and specifically the resurrection. He's trying to be careful. He's trying to be delicate. And I don't, by the way, I don't think that's right, Beth. D to be clear, I don't think that's right. I think that if we really believe Jesus is exclusive, we should tell people that Jesus is exclusive. And I really believe Jesus is the only way. I really believe that. There's also some discourse and contention with certain ideologies in Christianity. I think this may be a way of avoiding conflict with the Bart Ehrman and such. Um, yeah, so, so, so I'm not saying that's right. Right, because if, if if hell is real, and again, I think this is another reason why he does he goes on to not answer the hell question in this sense, right? Uh, pragmatically, in a sense that he don't want to be pulled into theological discussion stance and see from from a science perspective. Well, he already was though, because they already tried to pull him into the the the, the Islam versus Christianity conversation, right? Uh, uh, apparently, he was pressed further on this question when he had his daughter on here. Now, the interesting thing about uh, Michaela is that she is overtly Christian. She is. I believe Protestant and has been very, 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 very direct about her faith. So it brings me back to what I asked you yeah. when it was just me and you talking, which is whether you believe in God, what happened to your wife, to Tammy, mm. and her turning to God in that moment? Did that not give you all the proof you needed that there is a God? Well, I was already very religiously inclined before that. I mean, I've been studying religious thinking for four years, you know, and speaking to my students about that very mm. diligently during that whole time. And so, in some ways, I mean, the, the anniversary issue, that was very strange. <laughs> yeah. and, and the transformations that have occurred in relationship to Tammy are quite profound mm. and wonderful and, and hard to believe. Um, was that additional evidence to me? I already had a lot of evidence, you know, what we talked about in other, uh, I was already a firm believer in hell, you know, and I knew there was a route away from hell and the route away from hell is a religious pathway. Mm. Mm. So I've been walking down that pathway a very, very long time. So this was just another not just, you know what I mean? Hmm. It's it's a milestone and a marker, but it wasn't for me. That wasn't a qualitative transformation. Did you did you dodge the God question in the previous interview? Well, he no, did. I wouldn't, I wouldn't <laughs> he did. So. Okay, <laughs> he did. <laughs> and it was really it. it was really interesting. And in fact, it's almost like he's almost rewinding now because I, if I'd asked him right now, I, I may have got a different answer because I think Jordan, I think you do believe in God, and I think what's happened to your family has reinforced that well, belief. But for some reason, see, you're reticent to just modern say Modern people, modern people don't, don't understand this question. They think that it's a matter of believing in a set of facts. It's not. 
If you believe in God, you allow the spirit of the Logos to take residence within you. Now, but nobody understands what you mean if you say that. But like, I, I, un I think I'm understanding you. But just say Jesus instead of Logos or connect the dots. Say, give us a wink, wink. John 1-1, one, one. the Logos is Jesus. Well, I believe in God. Yeah. And, there, and I didn't before. Or I wasn't sure before. I was never an atheist. But, you know, when people say, do you believe in God? I'd say, I don't know. I don't really get it. I'd like to. I always wanted to. And so when mom converted to Catholicism and I saw, you know, a whole bunch of really weird things that I couldn't logic out happened, hmm. um, let alone dad becoming famous and then us all getting so sick and an unbelievable amount of suffering. And then mom's miraculous recovery that she knew ahead, ahead of time by two months, the date of that nobody could explain. Um, yeah, well, and, you, le you learned at least that you had no idea how the world worked. Oh, absolutely <laughs> none. That's what I learned is I don't understand what's going on at all. Um, but I saw the transformation that took place in mom and I saw how much more compassionate she became because mm. she's a very disagreeable woman. And mm. I wouldn't say compassion is one of her strong suits. And she became more compassionate somewhat dramatically. And I then I met... She's trying to love everybody in the world now. It's very annoying. Yeah, <laughs> it's nice. Uh, and, and so that was enough for... Oh, that wasn't quite enough for me, actually. It was about a year later, and Dad was so sick, and uh, and I didn't know. I had exhausted everything I knew how to do to help. I couldn't think of any other way I could help. And I remember praying at that point because I literally couldn't think of anything else to do. I was just just like, God, help us, help me. Um, and I think it was around that period where something switched and then my life got easier. And I don't know if that's because I let go of some control that I don't actually have, but my life switched directions and I felt calmer in a way that I couldn't uh, describe hmm. or come to any, I, I couldn't figure out why and I figured that was God. So that was enough for me to say, reality isn't exactly how we see it. There's more going on out there. And, and Michaela, I if, I asked you, if I asked you, Michaela, do you think your dad believes in God? What would you say? Pierce is a great interviewer. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I do uh, too. He definitely, he definitely, I, I think so. He definitely lives in a way where he knows that if he acts as if he believes in God, then he avoids hell. So I don't know what the difference between deal. that yeah. and belief is. Why would you do that if you didn't believe? Interesting hearing her response. I want to know what you guys think, though. You missed the big announcement earlier, which is we now have our prayer journals in the black and fully restocked in the tan. Invest in your spiritual disciplines. Uh, these feel amazing. They have all five-star reviews. I'm so ecstatic that we have the black ones in. Um, so go pick one up, bless God, prayer dot shop bless god prayer dot shop and if you cannot afford one you can go to bless god pdf dot shop get the pdf version okay i promise you the feedback on these has been amazing um and i'm i'm super ecstatic for the black ones and they just they just feel great in in the hand all right scoop one up if you have not